Hey, what's up? Let's face it, life without great falafel is hard and brutish. And unless you live in a place like New York City or Jerusalem, you probably don't even have access to it. So today we're gonna face this problem head on. I'm gonna show you guys how to make a proper, crisp, herb-packed, spice-kissed falafel ball at home. I'm gonna be getting into the details. I'm gonna show you guys how to make some accoutrement, some condiments, we're gonna talk to it all. So if that sounds like fun, stick around. Let's get started. Oh yeah, before we get started, we need to answer that old question. What makes a dope falafel? In my mind, it comes down to four things. Number one, properly ground garbanzo beans. And I'll talk to that in just a second. Number two, tons of fresh herbs. There's a reason I said herb packed in the intro of this video. Number three, gentle warm spices. Not too much, just enough. We're talking about mama bear amounts of cumin and turmeric to turn this thing up. Number four, the interior exterior ratio on these falafel balls has to be just right. We're looking for a bunch of crunch, but not too much. And we're gonna get into more depth on all four, but if you've got those things, you've got great, and I mean probably perfect falafel. So that's the what, let's get into the how. This recipe is gonna begin with one pound of dried garbanzo beans that we've covered with about four inches of water and let's soak on the countertop overnight. If you're asking yourself at this point, is it possible to make falafel with canned chickpeas? I can say with absolute certainty, no. Uh, from my experience, it's always fallen apart. A canned chickpea just has way too much water for it to stay together in the fryer. So I'm gonna drain off the water and flip these garbanzo beans into the food processor. The texture we're looking for here is something between a very fine gravel and coarse sand. If we grind this thing too big, we're gonna get crumbly, hard to digest falafel that's just gonna fall apart in the fryer. This is detail one from our list. Hitting the middle ground of texture is the most important thing in nailing this falafel. So after about 20 to 30 seconds, it should look like this. It's gonna be loose and crumbly and well broken down. We're gonna flip that into a bowl and then set the lid back on the food processor. Into that jar, we're gonna add one half of a red onion that we've roughly chopped, three garlic cloves, one jalapeno with the stem removed, 50 grams of parsley, 50 grams of cilantro, 15 grams of salt, five grams of baking powder, five grams of turmeric, and five grams of cumin. Pop the top on the food processor now and chop until very well broken down. We're taking the extra step of pureeing the beans and the aromatic separately here so that we can get the best possible texture for our balls. When I first started making falafel, I threw everything in the jar at once. But what ends up happening is you get under pureed chunky onions that are sitting in over pulsed, just totally broken down garbanzo beans. At this point, we're gonna fold the green paste into our chopped beans. All we're doing here is just stirring to combine. All the herbs that we put in here are gonna give the final falafel a huge dose of green freshness and a considerable amount of moisture. This is the second major detail that I talked to earlier. In my opinion, a falafel ball without plenty of herbs just kind of falls flat. Once things are fully mixed here, we're going to grab a little bit and shape it into a ball. I just like to see how wet things are at this point. Depending on how much water was in the herbs and onions, it can be a little bit juicier than we'd like for a hot fryer. So I got in the habit at this point of adding about one to two tablespoons of garbanzo bean flour. This makes things a little bit more well bound, but it also brings more tenderness and an almost creamy quality to the final product. If you don't have garbanzo bean flour, don't sweat it. A little bit of all-purpose flour works here as well. Once we're happy with the falafel mixture and it doesn't seem overly wet, we're gonna preheat our Dutch oven over medium heat, and into that we're gonna add about three cups of neutral oil. These days, I tend to use avocado oil more often than not for high heat cooking. It has a high smoke point, it's considered a healthy fat, and it doesn't oxidize and degrade like vegetable oil would, but it's pretty expensive, so if you don't wanna spend eight to ten dollars to fill up your fry pot, vegetable oil, canola, grapeseed oil, anything standard like that, it's gonna work. Just avoid olive oil or anything flavored. To be safe, I like to bring my oil up to temperature slowly, like over the course of 20 minutes. And that's just because if I get distracted, I don't have three or four cups of oil that are just sitting on a jet burner waiting to explode into flames. So while the oil is coming up to temperature, we're gonna shape our falafel balls. There's not a lot of art and science involved here. I kind of eyeball the shaping of these actually. I usually grab an amount that is slightly smaller than a golf ball. And then I roll it in the palms of my hands and give the guy a good squeeze of pressure at the end to firm it up. And then I set it on a sheet tray and let it hang out while I finish rolling out the rest of these balls. If you can help it, don't go too much bigger or smaller than this golf ball size. The ratio of tender, creamy interior versus brown, crunchy exterior is just about perfect at this size. If they're too big, they're gonna be raw and pasty and they're just gonna be lacking the right amount of crunch per bite. We've still got some time before this fryer comes up, so we're 
going to prep out the rest of our garnishes real quick. So up next, we're making tahini sauce. And this recipe is going to be more of like guidelines or a framework instead of an exact formula because the thickness and consistency of tahini varies widely from brand to brand. So grab a medium tall sided container and into it measure 100 grams of tahini. Ugh, this lemon juicer is raw, dude. I'm not even sure if it's safe. It's like rusty metal in there. Anyways, we're gonna use this lemon juicer to juice one half of a lemon or about 15 grams. To that, we're gonna add 75 grams of water and eight grams of salt. I'm also gonna grab a half of a garlic clove, slice that up and throw it into the cup. So grab your immersion blender and puree this really well. At this point, I'm gonna check the consistency. And as you can see, things are a little bit thin. This brand of tahini sauce I haven't used a lot and I definitely need to add a little bit more. I'm adding two more tablespoons. So that's bringing me up to about 130-ish grams all day. We're gonna spin that in with the immersion blender and we're gonna taste it again. This time around, it tastes really good. All we're looking for here is something that's bright and balanced, and it should be saucy just like this. So use your own palate to taste yours. You might need to add some water or salt or lemon and just adjust it as needed. This sauce is good on pretty much anything. So if you end up with extra, good for you. I'm gonna throw this tahini sauce in the fridge real quick, and now I'm gonna make a quick batch of tabbouleh. For that, I'm grabbing a bag of cauliflower rice. Listen guys, I know, bulgur wheat is normally what we use for tabbouleh, but I like the lighter, fresher quality of using a vegetable instead. And as some of you guys know, Lauren's gluten-free, so bulgur wheat wasn't an option in the first place. So to get this started, I'm just gonna throw one and a half cups, or about a half bag of this cauliflower rice into a saute pan. All we're looking to do is to thaw it out and take off the raw edge. That only takes about 20 to 30 seconds in the saute. At that point, I'm gonna flip it over into a stainless steel bowl and cool it down for a second. While that's cooling, I'm gonna grab a big bunch of parsley and throw a good chop into it. We want this stuff really well broken down. So run your knife through it more than once, maybe three or four times. Once we got that chopped, we're gonna scoop this into the cauliflower bowl and we're gonna season it up with a strong pinch of salt and the other half of that lemon that we used in the tahini sauce. Stir it up, give it a taste. It should be very aromatic, very sharp from the lemon and really pop on your tongue. The last little bit of prep here before we fry the falafels is just gonna be making a quick tomato cucumber salad. For that, I'm grabbing two small Kirby cucumbers and one pint of cherry to- oh. <laughs> Dang it. To cut the cucumbers, we're gonna break them into fourths and then gently remove the seeds. This is optional, by the way, but I don't like how wet they can make things later on, so I'm zipping them out real quick. After the seeds are cut out, I'm just running a medium chop through these cucumbers. We're gonna scoop those into a bowl and then we're gonna cut our tomatoes. So this is a fun trick. I use two deli lids and a serrated knife. This makes quick work of cherry tomatoes if you haven't used it before. Next time you get takeout, save the lids. This is a really handy way to save some time. Once we've got that whole pint of tomatoes chopped up, fold those in with the cucumbers. We're gonna hit this whole thing with two generous pinches of salt and a really strong hit of black pepper. We're gonna set that aside in the fridge while we fry our falafels. At this point, the oil is heated up to 350, so it's time to set up the fry station. On the right, I've got my sheet tray with a wire rack and a slotted spoon, and on the left is where I'm gonna post up my shaped falafel balls. Let's check the oil one more time just to make sure we're up to temp, and then using the slotted spoon, we're gonna lower the falafel balls in one at a time. I personally like to do this in three batches of eight. If you overload the fryer, it cools things down a little bit. That affects how crunchy the falafels get, but they can also get stuck together when there's too much in there. We're gonna fry these falafel balls for about five to six minutes. And about halfway through that, we're gonna put our spoon in there and just stir things up to make sure any spots that are sticking out of the oil are getting flipped down so they can fry all the way. After about four minutes, I'm gonna pull one out and take a look. It's starting to get there. It's starting to get crisp, but it's not all the way golden brown. So I'm gonna pop Pop that in and continue cooking for another minute or two. Once they're looking nice and dark, we're gonna cut one open to make sure it's cooked through. If things were still raw, there'd be a noticeable ring of squishy, unset bean paste right in the middle. This one's perfectly cooked. It's got a ton of crunch, and I know that because I burned my mouth really bad eating it. I'm gonna head back over to the pot, grab the rest of these falafel balls out of the oil, and drop my second batch. Now is definitely the snack point. While we're frying the second and third rounds, you always gotta crack a few of these falafel balls, give them a taste. It pretty much ruins you for the meal later on, but I'm hungry now. There's freshly fried falafel right there. I'm gonna eat them. So round two's done, round three's done. About 20 minutes later, we've got a full sheet tray of falafels. And now we reach a choice point. We gotta decide what do we do with these falafels and garnishes. Normally, Lauren and I would turn this into a salad. We'd put the tabbouleh, the cucumber tomato salad on some nice greens, and then just cover it all with some tahini. But clearly, the more craveable option is to turn it into a sandwich. And for me, 
Making it a sandwich always requires a few things. We gotta have sambal or some sort of spicy sauce, pickled peppers, we gotta have dill pickles. I usually go for hummus. And then of course we've got our tomato salad, our tabbouleh, and our tahini sauce. So this is where things got really fun for me when I was making this video. I accidentally bought whole wheat pitas at Whole Foods and got them home realized it and then decided to make it work anyways. And as you can see here, I have hot falafel balls. I'm ready to go building the sandwich and it crumbles. The second one crumbles, the third one crumbles. The entire package is trashed and I'm running red hot. Like I said, the falafel balls are hot and ready and I want them badly. So I run up to the store real quick and get some white flour pitas hoping that they're gonna work. Guess what? They don't, they crumble. I'm trying to go for that pita pocket style falafel sandwich and it doesn't work. Crumble after crumble after crumble. So I decide to go with a taco style falafel sandwich. And I've had this before at a few restaurants, but for me, the classic is always the handheld pita. But we're past that. Now we're firmly into falafel taco territory. So to do that, we're gonna throw a pita into a saute pan to heat it up, get it toasty, get it pliable, and then I'm gonna put down a heavy base layer of nice hummus as a glue. Behind that, we've got three chopped falafel balls, our cucumber tomato salad, plenty of tahini, and to garnish all that, we're gonna go with three to four pieces of dill pickle, a solid handful of sweet pickled banana peppers, or if you only had pepperoncinis, that will work as well. We're gonna to top that up with some sambal, and then finally, we're just gonna soak this thing in tahini sauce. So that's a pile of food. Let's check it out, let's take a bite. Here we go. So obviously, if you can find great pita or make your own, that would be ideal. That's how you can get those really nice pita pocket style falafel sandwiches, but to me, the falafel taco or gordita or whatever, chalupa, whatever you wanna call this thing, is like, look at this, it's dope. The tahini and the sambal and the hummus all kinda of come together to form like a sandwich moistening super condiment. And then you got crunchy cucumbers and tomatoes that bring a really nice fresh note. And then of course we got all that parsley uh, tabbouleh in there. This is one of the best ways to eat your vegetables that I could think of on earth. And this is vegan, for those of you that care. How about that? Cheers, dude. So here we are, we made it. Great falafel in the home is possible and now it's ours. I hope you guys give this recipe a try. Let me know in the comments down below how it works. One last thing before I get out of here. Some of you guys have been very generous and helped out this channel by buying me a coffee. The link for that is down below and if you're more curious, please click through, see what it's about. It's a great way to help us buy groceries for the channel and just overall to support what we're doing. So thank you so much to anyone who's helped us out there. We really appreciate it. As always guys, thank you so much for your time and attention. Thank you for being here and we'll see you next time.